affirm the lust of humans and the nature of monsters. Driven by their succubus instincts to seek human men, they descend frequently to the land of humans in search of lovers. An uncorrupted angel's duty is to award happiness to those humans who have done good deeds. An angel who has taken in succubus mana, however, equates sexual bliss with happiness, which she assails for favorable men with the joys of intercourse. She treats the human... We're gonna read more <laughs> We may as well just get started, right? Yeah. All right. Welcome back to the Monkey Bar. This is episode t uh, three. three. I almost said two. Yeah, um, two yeah, we're back to talk about something similar to the last episode, but uh, quite different, I'd say. Um, in case you didn't notice from the background, we are talking about Neon Genesis Evangelion. Um, not just the first original series, but the whole franchise as a whole. Oh, uh, yeah. I should just get us out of the way. I used to be diehard weeb fan of this. I, uh, uh, when exactly did you get into it? DeviantArt. When DeviantArt broke got launched, I saw a picture and I go, wow, I recognize this. So I showed my sister. My sister pulled out the complete series. I would say, well, when I got in DA, it was about 2009, 2010. I was 11 or 12. That's a really bad mix. Uh, what year was that, would you say? Uh, I Probably 2010, 2011. Yeah. Um, I want to say that was around the same time that I got into it. It might have been around 2011, but I was older, obviously. Um, and I got the, uh, the the Platinum case, which was uh, all like the whole series plus the Director's Cut edition. I got a funny story about that one. I got that for Christmas, and I loved it. I would watch the episodes every once in a while. And I went to show one of my, my teachers that, and he took episode the first couple episodes of the first disc. And then he moved to Canada with the disc. <laughs> so, it's funny, though. I've got the first couple episodes ingrained into my skull. Right? And what, 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 like, uh, what was your first impression seeing the, the series? I would describe it as, it's like, wow, it's got giant monsters and giant robots, but it's a thinking man show. Oh. I think now it's thinking man's and massive quotes. Yeah. My, my quotes are the size of, you know, the Evangelion. They change every episode. Hmm. Yeah, I, I had trouble getting into it at first. Um, 2011, I must have been like 19 or 20. And even then, I was kind of bored. But, or, or, no, not even bored, but, like, I couldn't really grasp it the first couple episodes. Um, I think this echoes the feelings of a lot of fans that uh, they didn't really get into it until, like, episode six or so. Yeah. Um, so that was my experience. And that, so I enjoyed episode six up until the last four episodes. Oh. And that's where it's... Um, I mean, I, I mean, like, if you're watching this right now, uh, you probably, 9 out of 10 of you probably have already seen, uh, or know all about Evangelion. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's strong up until the last couple episodes where it just kind of collapses in on itself. It, it, it's quite literally Icarus trying to fly too high. Mm -hmm. and instead of landing in the ocean, he landed on an island, the very confusion writing and changes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that uh, is a good way to describe it. Um, one thing to know is that uh, the director, Hideki Anno, wasn't really in a great place when he was uh, working on His wife died halfway through. Right, right. Um, but yeah, just like, if I was to describe uh, Nan and Genesis Evangelion, how would you describe it to somebody who's never heard of it? Oh, God. Uh, if Freud wrote an episode of a season of Gundam. If what? Freud, Sigmund oh, Freud. Freud. Um, the other way I would describe it is, imagine if you were watching a really, really good anime and your psychology professor was sitting right next to you the entire time asking you, so tell me about the scene, tell me about this analyzation. Well, I, like, coming off of uh, End of Ava, there's a scene where the giant, uh, the giant woman literally sprouts a vagina out of her forehead. And to me, I'm like, hey, that's a pussy. <laughs> uh, it's like, no, no, no subtlety there. Um... But we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, let's talk about the characters. Because oh, I... one thing that I always hear is that Shinji is, is a weak character. I'd say he's a strong character in what they were trying to communicate. And that he is a... It's probably the 
the most accurate way that uh, to portray that type of character, like a 13-year-old who's expected to get inside of a giant robot and kill everything. I mean, you, you'd be fucking terrified, too. Yeah, like, the show's strongest element is possibly the characterization. Because it knows when to show the cards and when not to. Um, there's, um, the fans are still pouring over the original series because there's touches we miss. Um, yeah. Um, I'm, yeah, Shinji's a, gr a good character. One of his biggest elements is that even though he doesn't want to, he still shows his aptitude. It could be just he's a protagonist, but when push comes to shove, he shoves hard. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the Joseph Campbell uh, archetype of the the uh, reluctant hero who like a eventually comes to answer the call, except in Evangelion's case, and in Shinji's case, he never comes to answer the call. Yeah. He's, he's constantly fighting against the call to action. <laughs> yeah, like... Every episode he has to run away. I, I admit that's one thing. The running away sequences are were always kind of the lamest episodes to me. Well, you know, the reason is because he mustn't run away. Otherwise, you end up with a boring episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I've been talking about Ava for years, man. Like, I'm getting flashbacks of the forum days before we had fancy IRC chats when we would type a post and then we'd check the next one and see how we were being called assholes. Mm -hmm. As the time went on, the word asshole eventually got replaced by cuck mm -hmm. and then memes started showing up. Oh, yeah. You remember Leet? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah Leet, Leet speak. Back to the topic of characters, uh -huh. I think we should discuss Asuka next. Yeah, Asuka and Rei, and which one of them is best girl? We sell this right now with, with fists. Best girl is clearly the unit one. Oh. <laughs> that was my favorite movie. Yeah, there's a thing about Rei that I want to get into a little bit in her part. Asuka is one of the better characters, in my opinion, because she starts off as the mega bitch, you know, uh, uh, I'm the best at what I do, and what that is isn't very nice, and that's a quote I've been trying to remember all week. That's a Wolverine, isn't it? Pretty much. She, I, that, that's a quote. Yeah, I'm sorry to remember the quote. I apologize for that. But, like, when you find out how screwed up she is mentally, when you find out that, oh, no, no. Like, literally, her dad ran off of the nurse after her mother killed herself with a baby doll. Hmm. See, I I vague, like, I have vague recollections of that, because I watched, uh, like, the last episodes of Evangelion a couple months ago, yeah. and that, it, like, despite how lengthy they describe everything, their monologues and everything, I... I couldn't really understand like the specifics of that yeah that's just it it's more clear in the manga from what i heard but i can't stand the manga yeah there's differences in the manga though the manga's like let's take the scenes cut them up and let's put them back in a different order because the manga went on after the anime was finished mm -hmm. um yeah i like asuka but <laughs> even in the sub i don't like her voice <laughs> yeah see i watched uh no, I watched the end of the series sub, or like, or yeah, subbed, and uh, I watched the uh, end of Ava dubbed, just just out of novelty. Yeah, like the voice of Asuka is basically Asuka in real life. <laughs> like from what I've heard, like she's the mega bitch that everyone in the dubbing studios hates. Yeah. And Shinji Akari's guy, whose name escapes me, is Spike on Spencer. Spike Spencer. I heard he's much nicer in comparison. <laughs> And now we have to get to Ray. Uh -huh. I have a fun fact for you. The Ray in the very beginning of the first episode is actually one of the Rays from End of Evangelion that's going around turning people to LCL. Uh -huh. That's why Ray was able to be in two places at once. Well, there's that scene where it's a huge vat full of like 50 of them. Yeah, but if you, like from what I remember, it's very. She's wearing the same outfit in that one that she is when she goes full a LCL mode or crazy. I thought that that part of End of Ava was a, like a hallucination of, for like everybody. No, or like that because wasn't it that uh, like the ghosts come back and they appear in the form of people who those people have connected to? Yes, but that raver because Shinji had no strong connection took the form of Ray. It's like the shapeshifter in the form. I remember that. I don't like Ray because I liked her up until it's your mother, but different. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
Yeah, that's uh, I can see how that would be a bit alienating for a lot of people. But I still like her design wise. She's one of the classic characters. She is the Kuda Arian. Yeah, that's one one of the strongest parts of End of it, or Evangelion as a whole is the character designs. The fact that and this is interesting because when I first got into Ava, I didn't like the designs of the the Ava uh, robots for That's some reason. You. Yeah, for some reason it was. Well, I think the reason is because I was more into real robots like Gundam. Uh, my first exposure to the mecha genre was Mobile Suit Gundam, the original 1970s series. And it's interesting to, to note that we're going to like go off topic for a minute, but uh, what's interesting about that is that everybody who says they they got into Gundam, their first Gundam was Gundam Wing. And that aired on Toonami, but uh, I think that the original Mobile Suit Gundam aired before that, because I don't remember ever seeing uh, Mobile, or Gundam Wing on Toonami. I must have gotten out of anime at that point. Uh, as a fun little easter egg to the Ava Geeks group, my favorite thing of, there was an Evangelion on Toonami for a while. Mm-hmm. It was all of two episodes. And one of the best things was they couldn't get Spike Spencer back, so they had a guy just do, like, Rosinio, ice, snacks, and 50 gallons of beers. Ice, snacks, and 50 gallons of root beer. I love it. I just picture he's standing in the back of the audio screaming into the mic. Wait, so there's a different company that dubbed it? Uh, basically, they just edited the dub. Oh, who did? I don't know. I I don't remember. I haven't seen Tsunami. But I also know when they do the bathing scenes, we're all wearing bathing suits. Hmm. I, I don't remember hearing about that at all. Yeah, it came and it went. Huh. I'll have to check online and see if... I might have to do some research myself. Because mm-hmm. I know of a guy who said Root was not Spike Spencer at all. Huh. Spike Spencer, he... I don't know, he didn't really do a great job as Shinji. Shinji. I hear people say that he's like the weakest voice actor in the dub. Yeah. On the topic of dubs, I I grew up listening to the original Ava dubs and subs. So when they went over to Rebuild and they changed all the voice actors, it was so weird. Is Spike Spencer still? Uh... Yeah, he's the like one of the two returning voice actors. The other one being Asuka, whose I apologize, actress's name I don't know. I mean, I like on the subject of uh, the Rebuild. We'll, yeah. we'll get to that oh, af- yeah. later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. Uh... I mean, the last thing I want to talk about with the original series is the myth of uh, the budget cuts. Yeah, I heard there were budget cuts. I don't know about that. First um, yeah, because I've done re- some research, and a lot of people have been uh, bringing this up lately, is that uh, there really wasn't any, like, like, because like, for those of you who don't know, the last uh, five or so episodes of Evangelion, they, ha- they, they appear to have like run out of money when they're t- doing like storyboards just putting that in place of animation um i i've heard that it was actually due to creative license uh by anno and i think there might be a little bit of both in there because from what i understand uh Hideki anno was changing the script as the show was being put in production so every episode like Every episode that got aired, they would be, like, mid-production on that, the next episode. And it was just him being sort of an auteur. So pretty much Demented South Park. Oh, uh, I, I guess you could say that. I've been sitting on that one for a while. <laughs> um, I'm not too hot in the last couple episodes, but I understand why they were that way. So that you understand, like... Yeah, that in the end of Ava, they both kind of preach the same thing, where it's like, everything sucks, or, I mean, not really, but it's more like, uh, I don't know what I want, tell me what tell me what to do, you have to decide that for yourself, no, I don't know what to do, it goes back and forth, and it all becomes, like, mashed together in this big ball of, like, fuck, I don't know. <laughs> Do you know what I really want to hear now? Everything is awful! Just Lego doing their version of Evangelion. <laughs> like your little feature like in the Ray place up all the Ray um, uh, mini figs that you have in the tank. If you spin it, they fall apart. <laughs> but yeah, um, the last episodes are really love it or hate it. And it's more often than not hate it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, is there really anything else to say about that other than, you know... Best girl is Ritsuko Akagi. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't know. I'm kidding. 
Yeah, like I think that no, like all girls are worse girls than they. But I think that's kind of the point. Not even Gendo like Frisco. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to get into the Ava. <laughs> yeah, it's it sucks because I couldn't find um, End of Ava on like online except for a uh, a streaming site that shall not be named for uh, legal reasons. Um, but but I looked on Amazon. There, the, like the only way to buy, the only way to look at it is uh, this is through the DVDs that they're selling. The DVDs are like. $160 on Amazon. Ooh. And there was literally nowhere else to find it. If you have to buy it for $160, it better come to you in, a, in an Ava. Mm -hmm. Well, that's like, that's the only case that I'll advocate for piracy, uh, is uh, if you can't find it anywhere, if it's like literally nowhere, and the only way to find it, the only way to watch it legally is through like a ridiculously convoluted or expensive format. Um, I'll, I'll get off my soapbox now. Yeah. Um, let's move on to, on that subject, End of Ava. And yeah, speaking of clusterfucks, um, I'll, I want to give my first impression. So I wrote down some notes while I was watching it. Um, I, like, I started, like, on the subject of uh, dubs versus subs, I started watching it uh, subtitled. At four minutes in, I decided to switch to dubs just out of novelty because mm -hmm. I realized that... Uh, I think I was remembering how, uh, like, when I watch, was watching the end of the series subtitled, I was just really bored. Um, and it's funny because I, th I had figured the opposite when I was watching the end was, uh, was okay, if the, like, even if we, like, freeze frame on the, on a, a single image, a single, single still image for, like, two minutes, at least I'll be able to read the subtitles to keep myself occupied but no it was still boring so i just switched to the dub because it's at least entertaining to hear the some of the voices like in particular the uh one of the nerve scientists the guy with the glasses he's voiced by a black guy i know but my favorite meme is they go black hugo i think his name is hugo uh. do you know my favorite ever dub is i have to hit him again <sighs> is he dead hit him again <sighs> ah! Ah! <laughs> I'm sorry, I just love that scene. It's my favorite memory of Ava. There's also a line where it's like, you know, uh, I think it was uh, in, in the nerve where the lady scientist is like, you know, is this going to be the end of the world? And then the director's like, oh, hell if I know. <laughs> and I just laughed out loud at that. Yeah, it's got some good moments because I think the dub, the dubbers didn't even like it. Yeah, I, I can see that. I, I just have to say this before you continue reading your notes. All I'm picturing is all work and no play makes Tony a dull boy over and over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, one thing I wrote down, like, perplexing, like, I think it was uh, right at the beginning, I wrote down the word realism with a question mark next to it. And I think it's because it was when um, Sele was invading uh, Nerve and gunning down everybody. And I was thinking, like, this is kind of how the apocalypse would play out in real life. I don't know. That might have been what was going through my head. Was, you know, this is, this is probably how people would react or something. I don't know. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I just love um, that just you don't really hear about the JSSDF or whatever they are uh, in the, until the first episode. Then the episode of the giant derpy robot. Then the end. No one knows what happened in the two big holes in those. Hmm. I'd like to imagine that they're going like, hey man, we should raid Nerve. Let's raid Nerve. Come on, they're nerds. <laughs> it's literally one layer away from nerd. Oh my god, it is. I did. Uh, um, I liked Asuka's uh, voice actress. There. Uh, like the part where she's at the bottom of the lake and she's like whispering to herself. This is uh, neat ASMR. She's like, you know, I don't want to die. Like, I want to die. I want to die. And like, I thought that she did a good job uh, for the most part. I do, but she's kind of a bit short yeah. into uh, cons. Speaking of that scene, when those mass produced Avas come out, that is one of the best fight scenes, in my opinion, of anime. Because mm -hmm. of hacking limbs and heads. And what's really fun, picture of a drone from Pacific Rim 2 in that scene. Oh, oh that would have been. That would have been great to see that in live action. Oh, yeah, like, I heard on top of live-action Ava that Studio Weta with Peter Jackson wanted to do an Ava movie and nothing ever came of it. Mm -hmm. He also wanted to do a Halo movie, if I remember correctly. I could see him doing both. That was, like, well, but he dropped out of doing the Halo movie to produce District 9, which was actually a really good movie still. 
I just want to see like down, down the waifu town. <laughs> just, out of nowhere, just like a oh, crap. Like, oh. Yeah, there's a. For some reason, I wrote Ava series with a question mark. I'm not sure what I wanted to talk about with that. I like their designs. Oh, I I like the, them. The lips are creepy. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely. Were, were they drones? No. Are well, they have rays inside of them. Little rays. Yeah. The uh, the, the plug. autopilot that was the that dummy plug, dummy plug. the dummy plug. Yeah. By the way, the fun fact: their heads are designed to look like a. A penis with a foreskin, so when they open their mouth and the rays come out, mm -hmm. that was the intention. And I remember being scarred by that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They're like making the like orgasm sounds. Yeah, and it's like yeah, I, yeah. I can see why people like say it's the most fucked up anime ever. It really isn't. But uh, it's it's probably if it's a less than one to ten, it's probably fifteen. The I checked the IMDb page. It's like an eight point three. There's no way that's. Ugh. It's Ava Geeks. How dare you? How dare you? Raid the page. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. I didn't read any of the reviews. Oh, my favorite thing, um, if you, uh, on Ava Geeks, when I was on there, if there's a negative review, it's the titles of a friend like, we have been, it has been disrespected again. And they, and they hold Ava like it's just, like, it's like the Pope created it. It's like the Pope of anime. I mean, in a way, it's sort of connected in a, in a way, I don't know. It's a it's bloated and overpowered. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Um, I had the like because I just watched uh, Devil Man a couple of months ago, and how uh, the end of Devil Man is almost identical to the end of Ava. Did you enjoy the ending? Uh, of Ava? Of oh, Devil Man? Uh, sure. well, not quite. And it's funny because the complaints I have with End of Ava completely contrasts with the complaints I have about the end of Devil Man. And because uh, the end of Devil Man Cry Baby, it um, it's done in a way that's where it's not completely nihilistic. It's done in a way to imply you know, life goes on, uh, everything is uh, circular, not like not all is lost. And I didn't like that because I thought it wasn't uh, nihilistic enough. The, the manga ends completely like like a slap in the face. Um, but the, the complaints I have about End of Ava are the opposite, where it's like, it ends with a slap in the face, and I'm like, uh, so, what's the point? You want to know my thing about the ending is? That there's actually another version of the ending, really? where Shinji actually kills Asuka. And then he cries. Hmm. It's going to be a masturbate That might have been the one, the, the one that I watched. It's where, uh... He broke her neck? Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> he... <laughs> He killed her! What was the ending you saw? Where, uh, she goes, you idiot, and tries to slap him and ends up caressing his face. Er, yeah, that's, that's what happens. Yeah, that, man, I'm, my, my mind's a blur when it comes to this. Like, I, I just watched it, like, a couple hours ago. Oh, God. Yeah, she, because I remember she says idiot. I also lost her bet I referenced that scene first. Mm. Oh, well, I don't think he did. Uh, we, we can talk about, quote, unquote, the scene. Um, did that really add anything to the to the story? Did, did this entire did this entire movie even add anything to the franchise? It it created many memes. Oh yeah, I mean to this day. I, I think it's supposed to show the depravity of Shinji. Like, yeah. look what he did. All I can hear is Taylor Swift. Look what you made me do in the back. I'm so fucked up. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, to this day, I can't I can't watch an anime where like it zooms in on the on the character's right hand without thinking of that. I wonder if ever they bet in the Hellboy movie just boy's hand. He's looking at the right hand of Doom. He's like, I'm gonna fuck those demons up. <laughs> Switch around. Um, yeah, the voice acting was decent. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, like, aside from the, the obvious memes, um, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, if they ever do a live-action movie, I'm voting for Samuel L. Jackson to play Hyuga, but you just, like, CG and have a face on there and just yes. have it <laughs> Like, next level of CGI mustache, CGI blackface. Or whiteface. Uh, yeah. So, so it's not that. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, another another one was that like the military commander kept calling his soldiers ladies. It's like, yeah, I can see what I see what you did there. I'm sorry, I just want to see him like you know, pull up pull up the the the, the, the pant legs and they're all wearing high heels. <laughs> but yeah, you can see a lot of. Uh, it probably stems back to Devil Man. The ending uh, it was because uh, there's a lot of uh, a lot of different uh, properties that have referenced. Uh, that version of the apocalypse, like uh, Full Metal Alchemist, for one. Yeah. Remind me a lot of... That's what I was thinking of when the uh, instrumentality was happening, was with all the red dots swirling around and the eyeball. I just remembered something I forgot to mention. There is a live-action scene in End of the Evangelion that isn't in the American cuts and the Japanese release. Yeah, like, there are some uh, live-action clips in the one I saw. Well, it's one that actually has the characters in it. It's like, what if Shinji never existed? And basically, from what I know, I haven't seen the clip. I'm I'm pretty sure it exists. Basically, Asuka has sex with the two friends of Shinji, hmm. and that's basically the end. Like, hey, and that's what happened if Shinji never existed, and that's probably the rationale of why you should exist. Yeah, there are live action scenes. This is gonna sound inter- like this is gonna sound weird, kind of out of left field. But the live action parts remind me of uh, Ralph Bakshi. Ralph Bakshi films, because uh, I had recently watched Heavy Traffic for the first time, and uh, his animated films tend to mix or splice in live action footage. With... I know of what's the one Wizards. Yeah, they have Wizards, the, Wizards. The, the damn Third Reich showing up. Oh yeah, that's that's a plot point in that because the Third Reich the, or like the Nazi footage is what causes the the uh, leader of the evil army to like rise up above the ranks and command his armies by imitating Hitler. So I, I thought that was interesting. I'm really glad that there's no like footage of like oh never mind. I do there are rumors from when I was on Anime Geek so that Heidi Ekiano I'm sorry if I mispronounced that is that he actually produced an Evangelion porn using cells from the actual anime. Hmm. I mean that's not unbelievable for me. Oh. I actually found out that... Uh, you ever heard of Project Echo? No. It's, it was this uh, OVA made in the 80s, and it was originally intended to be a hentai, but they, I guess the producers decided to just make it into a uh, parody uh, re- like with a bunch of uh, references to uh, Macross, and there's a part where Colonel Sanders plays a slasher villain. I have a question. Do we have enough time to get the rebuild? Yeah, we have enough time. Cool, because I want to rip that goose apart. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, I, I didn't really like End of Ava. It's, uh, I wanted to like it, but near the end I was just like, come on, get, oh. o- get on with it. I forgot to mention my first impressions of it. Me oh, yeah, and yeah. my friend Colin, we saw it. We, it was like watching a snuff film. I watch it. We turned the lights a little bit low. We, we, we might as well have fake cigarettes smoking like... And then in comes... Um, I don't remember who it is, just... I think it's one of his cousins walked and said, Damn! Did that bitch in his hand just fell off? And that is my new favorite line whenever I see that. All I hear is that commentary in my head. Yeah, I can see this as uh, being a good movie to riff with a bunch of friends. Ah, oh, riff trash. <laughs> yeah, that would be interesting. I just want to see Crow and Tom Servo versus the Avos. <laughs> I mean, they have done giant monster movies before. I wish we were watching Gamera right now. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to make our own movie or our own riff tracks of that. Oh god, that'd be entertaining. Uh, but moving on, as per your suggestion, to the rebuilds, and I know that you have uh, strong feelings about that. Uh, why don't you tell us about it? So I I like Ava's concept more than I do the actual show. There's a lot of a show I really, really like. And then Rebuild comes along, and the trailers were online, oh my god, this is going to be amazing. And it finally comes out. And it would be like if it's Christmas morning, you're walking down the stairs, all the presents are laid out, and you open it. And it's your family's head in a box, so that's how god-awful it is. Um, but yeah, Rebuild, Rebuild is about... It's basically a remake, sort of, of... Or it was meant to be a remake? Re-sequel, mate, is what I call it. Resequel boot. Yeah. Because there's like you can see the outlines of the mass produced Avas, you can see ruins, you can like there's a theory that Shinji Akari in the first series is actually Gendo in the new one. It's weird. It's weird as all hell. 
I, I need to watch the last two of them. Because I watched the first one, and I felt disappointed because it was just a crappy remake. And then I watched the second one, and out comes this, this brown-haired British, I'm a classy girl, in her centaur Ava, which is kind of awesome. And then she hijacks Asuka. I don't even like Asuka that much, and I want her over her. Mm. And then it just got worse and worse. If I would, re- You know how you feel about Rampage? That's mm. how I feel about Rebuild. Mm. Maybe a little bit less aggravated, but my big problem is, it's like, hey, hey, Anno, what's up, man? Want to do a new series? Oh, yeah, I want to do a remake. Cool. Write the script. Cool. Check it out. That's, man, we can't do uh, Goran Logan again. That's too recent. Let's just change the names. Doesn't it feel like it would be a little bit like Goran Logan? Have you seen any of I haven't seen the rebuilds. Um, I've been meaning to, and I'm like... I don't know. Uh, after watching uh, after watching End of Ava, I have a hard time believing that the rebuilds are any worse. Oh, they're they're worse, but in a different way. It would be like a, they had like a Star Wars fan film had the budget of Star Wars. How I would describe the writing of it. So Rogue One. But Rogue One's good. Oh. Kind of. Well, I liked it. It was okay. Um, see, I, I have a hard time believing you. Uh, I, I just have some... I have a different hate of End of Ava than you do. Uh, my End of Ava hatred is more... It just got lazy, in my opinion. Uh-huh. It got real lazy. If... Do you like the first half better than the second half? Yeah, yeah. What if it was just basically the first half, and it kept going? And it just was more, you know... You could still have the world break down, but you don't have it just... Over. Hmm. Can't snap my fingers. I don't know. I have a hard time picturing it. I mean, after after watching End of Ava, it's hard for me to really picture anything else happening in it other than... Because, like, the visual imagery is just so strong. Uh, I do... That's one of its strongest elements, one of its weakest elements. Mm-hmm. By the way, my favorite line in the Japanese... There's, it's a fan dub error from one of our fan dub where... The part where Asuka says, what am I, your side dish? And people go, wait. She wants him to eat her? And it's like, no, apparently side dish is Japanese slang for somebody who, yeah. So, like, I think they might have meant to say side bitch. Because no, it's a Japanese uh, thing, apparently. Oh. A side dish is someone that you um, enjoy thinking about in intimate moments mm. at night rather than your partner. Mm. <laughs> and we didn't understand what that meant until we had an actual person who knew Asianology in our huh. group. Yes, it sounds like something that, like a four kids sensor or something. Yeah, you saw the the four, like the four kids parody opening event. Dude, I just have a quick. I know this is for a moment. Do you know how we should end this? We have to do a cover of the four kids opening. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be up for that. It's, it's, uh, I'm mentally drained. I understand, man. I'm kidding. Uh, On rebuild because um we should maybe do an episode in the far far future about watch or are you watching it? I have to say this. If you come in with high expectations, you will be disappointed. You come in with low expectations, you will still be disappointed. Huh. It would be like if you're a really smart honor roll student, or student in your class got hit by a car and came back as something other than him. Huh. See, I don't know. Because uh, I don't think I feel as strongly about uh, Evangelion as you do. I, I, I don't see... See, I think I think of uh, Evangelion as, as that... Uh, like the, a pretentious college student who uh, read uh, who, who read uh, Nietzsche, N- N- Frederick Nietzsche once and thinks he's just a, a, an intellectual scholar. Now I know how to say Nietzsche. <laughs> yeah, I think that's how it. I don't know. Don't uh, don't put so much merit on me. But uh, yeah, it just comes across as pret- pretentious and just. I mean, well intentioned. I but, want uh, you to just know I was eight years younger than you when I watched it. Likely. So when I watched it, it was the hottest thing on earth. That's why it stuck with me. Hmm. Probably if I watched Rebuild, I'd find them just aggressively mediocre. But I realized how I would describe Ava to a friend. It's like, not Watchmen of mecha anime, but a Watchmen ripoff of mecha anime. Hmm. 
It's trying to be all intellectual, but fails. It tries to be all action-y, but fails. Because mm-hmm. it doesn't understand why the original did so well. Mm. I'm just trying to figure out what the hell they were ripping off in that case. Mm. I would probably feel more strongly if it was an anime that I really loved, like uh, Madoka Magica. If they did a rebuild of that and it was basically Sailor Moon, then I would be like, well, why not just make a Sailor Moon remake? I was doing research in the Cosmic Horror for something and they had Ma- uh, Madoka Magica and they're like, the hell? Really? Uh, where'd you find it? Uh, TV Tropes. Oh. Huh. But it was referencing Cosmic Horror and I'm like, I might have to watch this now. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know much about Madoka Magica other than that, and it's an inversion of Sailor Moon sort of thing? Uh, inversion of Sailor Moon or Card Captor Sakura. Uh, um, and since I I think that, uh, yeah, Sailor Moon was, if not my first anime, then one of my first animes. It's probably tied, like, because it was right around the same time that uh, Pokemon came out. And. Um, so yeah, it was either that or Pokemon that was my first anime. So. My first anime was Cory in the House. <laughs> I'm sorry. I saw the opportunity. I took it. King of the Hill is the best anime. There's an actual meme on Ava Geeks about if, if Gendo Akari built um, the Geo Front in Texas and he goes, yep, 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 indeed. <laughs> you have to steeple your fingers when you talk to do a Gendo impression. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I just have mixed feelings about Ava as a whole. I think if it had a really, really good remake, like, give it to Ava, not Ava Geese, don't give us that. Cause it, no, but like, if you redid the show, do just take the original scripts. What's left of them that <laughs> Hideki Anna didn't use to smoke. And if you do it, you know, change the scenes, maybe play the characters, I bet you could get something special out of that. Mm-hmm. Like, totally, it's got some good ideas. It, you know, because it knows how to really stretch a scene. You say, you know, like, they have entire scenes where characters are staring at the floor and you hear, tell me, why did you do this? <laughs> I ran away! <laughs> okay. The crap was her cry, but I did bite up her voice. Mm-hmm. But, y- yeah. I'm mixed on it, too. It's just I have more nostalgia than anything. Right. If I watched the entire series right now and never saw it before, I'd probably go, oh, it's Pacific Rim. Mm-hmm. I mean, now that I think about it, that's the reason, like, your feelings about the rebuild, that's the reason that I haven't checked out Dragon Ball Super. Um, because I grew up with Dragon Ball Z, and oh. Dragon Ball Z was groundbreaking, and br- groundbreaking uh, as pointed out by uh, this uh, YouTuber I follow, Super High Patch Wolf, who does these uh, these uh, video essays about anime that uh, he grew, grew up with, or he's he, he gets into, and he give, gives these very informative, very well constructed uh, essays about uh, about uh, these anime. But he, he was talking about how he grew up with Dragon Ball Z as to die. And how it was so groundbreaking, and how intense it was, and how like intense the fights were, and how uh, like yeah, it was just uh, completely like a, a sucker punch to the Western tele- to Western cartoons. And Dragon Ball Super, from what I understand, it has those moments of action but intensity, but it doesn't come close to. It's it's very goofy, from what I understand. It has these very goofy moments. Which I guess is more faithful to the original uh, Dragon Ball um, that, that came before Z, um, but I just, I just, uh, it just doesn't really appeal to me. Do you know? I just realized what my first anime actually was Full Metal Alchemist. Ah, is it the two original? Oh. And I remember watching it and going, "Wow, th- this looks like Pokemon. Did their parents just die?" Are they running away? Is he a cripple now? I, I have a natural question. I wonder if there's actually like disabled community to use Edward Elric as an inspiration. Because, you know, he, he gave up an arm and a leg and he's still fighting. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of controversial because the whole goal of his character is to, to get, get his one back. Yeah, well, I mean, he gets one of them back. Spoilers. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, 
back to Ava. I guess the last thing we can talk about is the, uh, speaking of the manga, there was a manga set in, like, an alternate universe, and it's like a Slice of Life series. I know, a Girlfriend of Steel? Um, I don't know. It, it, it's not I know never... Oh, yeah, I read those. Mm-hmm. I kind of like those. Huh. Uh, would you recommend them? Maybe. If you like Slice of Life, yes. If you like Ava, kind of. All I have to say about what I love most is Volume 2, you know. It's, it's Asuka and Ray locking Horsey. Who's gonna get their man? Who's gonna get their man? And all of a sudden, Kaoru shows up. Uh, you know, Ava Jesus. Mm-hmm. And when the gay guy shows up, they have to go like, Unite! Unite! Mm-hmm. Oh, there isn't apparently an anime where they have where Ava's turn into weapons. Mm-hmm. And Asuka gets a whip. Yeah, there's a bunch of spinoffs like you were telling me just the other day about like vampire thing yeah they were supposed to rebuild was supposed to have sh- like vampires and werewolves and ghosts so it's basically going to be hellboy but in- but they are the monsters there's also was supposed to be from the series bible revealed they were going to have an animal sidekick ava it was they had a dog that died, so they turned him into an ape wolf. <laughs> and apparently, he was supposed to have like blades that shoot out of his arms and shit. I... So just in case you didn't believe us, this is still relating to the monster podcast. Because, because of course, Gendo Akari is a horrible monster. <laughs> By the way, the whole point of the show I can sum up is: Hey, don't be your dad. Why? Because I'm your dad. Oh yeah. You did it. You just summed up Ava. And... How's that? How's that Eric Andre meme go? I don't know. It's like, oh yeah, you you broke down Ava to its basic element. <laughs> Not really, but uh, yeah, pretty close. Yeah, dude, it's the um, one final way to describe it. It's the lyric from Ghost uh, Ghost Rise of Sky. Uh, Cowboy, change your ways, or with me you will ride. Dun 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 dun. Man, with Ava, if like whenever you, whenever I discuss it with something, like, especially with you, I I feel like I've run a marathon. I apologize, man. Uh, how long have we been talking for? Apparently, forty-two set minutes. Are you serious? I'm so sorry. Uh, man, uh, no, I think we're still good. Um, this is a super long episode. I mean, I was expecting this to run at least an hour. Um, yeah. I mean, especially with, because I know that uh, you're just an encyclopedia when it comes to Ava. Yeah. <laughs> it is my curse. It is my gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, so we talked about uh, the original series. We talked about Rebirth. We talked about End of Ava. Um, what, what else is there? How about I talk about the fandom for a little bit? Oh, yeah. I think we can wrap it up by talking about the fandom, Ava Geeks. Because I think, well, you're definitely more experienced uh, with on that battlefield than I am. I, I love that you use Battlefield because it was the Battlefield. Because Ava Geeks came in a couple groups. Like, oh, my God, this is the greatest anime ever. How do I learn more? And the second group goes, then let me teach you the ways of our people. And then you get, like, a really, really leftist, left-wing, uh, you know... Ava Ken, we used to call them. And then you get the, yeah, 4chan. They weren't even like 4chan users. They just like saying 4chan and using peppy memes. Huh. And those people ended up in R9K, I guess. But is that the same place where you met the guy who thinks he's Robot Jones? No, I met that on a Five Nights at Freddy's website where I was shit posting. <laughs> and so you've been, you've been down the rabbit hole and back. I guess you can say. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm kind of the same, but in, I think, older websites for me. Uh, I remember being into uh, Snafu Comics, and that was the same website that hosted the Powerpuff Girls uh, anime uh, comic created by, you remember Bleed Man? I know the name. Yeah, that was uh, where he got his start. And I was shocked to see that it started in 2001, and it's still going to this day. That is shocking to me. The guy is like in his 40s, in his late 40s now. Um, That's no way to make a living son. <laughs> I want to say that he did uh, do Ava art, I'm not sure, but I just want to try and keep it relevant. Oh, I have one story in there that I really love, was we were going to do our own fan dub, but in the style of a really bad like 80s dub or 70s It's so like an abridged show? Yeah. 
and then someone beat us to it. But I remember we we're gonna do stuff like we have a character named Asuka, and they're gonna have Rayleigh, and then we have Sean. I remember uh, Ray, uh, well, like that name, because uh, in the Sailor Moon original dub, she was just called Ray, but it was spelled R A Y E. But of course, like you wouldn't know that unless you like looked on the official website. Did you know that they actually call her Ray because or Ray and Ava Gillen because of Sailor Moon, and that Masato's voice actor in Japanese is Sailor Moon. Wow, wow. And they did that because Hideki Anno used to be off to Sailor Moon. I hate to say it like that, but that's what he said. Well, he actually directed the live-action Cutie Honey uh, movie, which and Cutie Honey is kind of what inspired Sailor Moon. If I remember correctly. Yeah. Because Cutie Honey was the first, uh, uh, the first magical girl. It was a magical girl saw philanthropist. It learned how to walk on two legs. Crap! That's only a Metal Gear reference when I was going for a paleontology reference. Oh yeah, that, that like Metal Gear was the first thing that came to my mind. <laughs> oh, oh! I have one fandom, so we were doing our really crappy dub. And I was supposed to be in it when I was, like, 14. I was going to voice the Fuski, the guy who helps Gendo. Gendo's Alfred Pennyworth. And I was supposed to talk like this. And I don't remember why, but it was to look like I have to match the character's lip syncing. And I remember one of the jokes they're going to have was that the Unit 1 talks, and it talks in, like, Hi, friend, I am Unit 1. Like a Barney. Yeah, and like Unit 2 was the sass, <laughs> sassy black chick of the group. And the Unit 0 was just, um, I forget what it was. I think it was British. And it was really awful. Like, god awful. I also remember in Ava Geese one time we had a, a discussion that lasted like a, a couple hundred pages going about, does Evangelion have a vagina? And my response to, it, to that, and always will be, why does it matter? It's, it's not like it's not like Steve Irwin would be the walk over here, but it's it's weird. The fandom at the same time rips the show apart. It used to tear it limb from limb and get for that delicious Ava juice. At the same time, it defended it blindly. Hmm. If I had to have a cult of soldiers, I would pick Ava geeks. They would they would die protecting themselves. I'm rambling here. I apologize. It's okay. I think we're about to wrap it up anyway. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, I've been Tony. I've been Zach. And this has been the Monkey Bar. <coughs> Congratulations. <laughs>